Hi, I'm Dave Prouse. In this video, we're going to do some basic performance testing of a Kia DHCP server using the Perf DHCP tool. And you can see here I have two server console windows open. And the first is deb-kia1. That's where the DHCP server is, and it's currently running. And then we have deb tester, and that's where I'm going to install the utilities to run perf DHCP, and that's where I'm going to run the test from. So we have to install the Kia common and the admin packages on this deb tester. And once we do that, we'll test the DHCP server using that perf DHCP tool. And then we'll discuss just some basic performance upgrade techniques that you can follow to make a DHCP server run a little bit better. So first thing we need to do is install Kia Common and the admin package. I've already used curl to get the repository for Kia, and I just have to install those packages. So I'm going to do an apt install. I'll do it with the dash y, and I'll maximize this. And it's going to be the ISC Kia Common. And you have to install that first. And then the other one is ISC Kia Admin, which has a variety of utilities, including Perf DHCP. So we'll grab those now. And those are installed. Bring that back over. And now we can run a test against the DHCP server. So I'm going to go to the DHCP server now and run the top command. Press enter for that. So you can see here not much going on. The CPU is hardly being used, hardly any memory being used. And the DHCP server is active, but it's not really doing much of anything just yet. So a very plain server that's not busy at all. Let's make it busy by running the perf DHCP tool. Now, this system, the server, the DHCP server, is 172.21.0.211. And this system here, the testing system, is 172.21.0.213. So I'm going to connect from this system over to this one. And we'll do that with the perf DHCP uh, utility and just connect by IP 172.21.0.211 for that Deb Kia server. And press enter. And that starts running perf DHCP on that IP address. The scenario is basic and multi-thread mode is enabled. So if you have multiple threads, if you're using more than one CPU on your testing box, then that can actually work and you can use those additional threads. By default, that's enabled in the tool. And both of these virtual machines have two CPUs and I believe four gig of RAM. And actually you can see that here. So when you see it say multi-thread mode enabled, that means it's using multiple threads in the CPU as long as you've selected those in your virtual machine. So this test is just going to run until we stop it. Let's take a look at the Kia server and maximize that top window. And you can see that the Kia DHCP4 is running at 100% of the CPU. And if we look at those two CPUs, those two threads together, that's basically going to make 100 CPU. Not all that much memory being used, but the CPU is definitely cranking right now. Then we also see system D journal using about 50% and R syslog D at about 30%. That's moving around. So you see what's being used when we run that test. And it's definitely using a lot of power on the server. So let's go back now and we'll go back to the testing box and I'm going to press control C to break out of that test and see the results. Okay, here's the test that we ran with multi-thread. And it's what this does basically, if you run the command and the IP address by itself with no other parameters, 
is it's just going to try and hit the server with as many DHCP exchanges as possible and see what the maximum is that it could actually do before we start getting a lot of drops. The maximum RAID was able to do with this basic test was 1688 four-way exchanges per second. And the four-way means DORA, Discovery, Offering, Request, and Acknowledgement. And it breaks that up into two sections, DO, Discovery and Offering, and RA, Request and Acknowledgement. And so it flooded that server with tons of requests. So you want to use this tool very carefully. This particular command you would not want to run on a production server. But in this test environment, it shows a lot of packets were sent. And it shows that there was a lot of drops, 87% for the discovery offering and 71% for request and acknowledgement. So that's no good. We don't want to have that many drops, but it's basically showing the fastest it could do with that basic test. We might be able to go beyond that. So one of the things we can do is run the perf DHCP test with the dash R parameter and specify how many of those exchanges we want to do. We can specify instead of it just forcing as many as it can, we could specify say 1000 to that IP address. Okay, so let's run that test. Press enter now, that's running. Go back to the Kia server. And you can see that Kia DHCP is at about 47%. The journal's at about 20% and the syslog's at 10%. So it's doing a lot better with this. It's actually, uh, it's picking up that load pretty well. And that's, a thousand exchanges per second. Let that run for another couple seconds and let's compare it to the amount of drops that we got before. Previously with that full on force test, the discovery offering drops ratio is 87%. Request acknowledgement, 71%. Let's take a look and see what it is now. Control C to break out. And it says, okay, it was doing 999.966 four-way exchanges per second. And the drops ratio is actually zero, zero percent for both discovery offering and for request acknowledgement. So this gives you a little bit of a better idea of what this server could actually handle. Let's try it again with say 4,000 and see what happens. Go back to the Kia server, check out the top command. We're back up at about 100% of the CPU for Kia DHCP4. And again, this in top, this really means, you know, you can go beyond 100% because we have multiple threads, but we're using a lot, that's for sure. So let's close that and see how it did, okay? It was able to get up to 3,317 exchanges per second. So 3,317 four-way exchanges per second, but it did start encountering some drops, 13% drops on discovery offering and 3% drops on request acknowledgement. And so that number is just gonna get higher and higher as we increase this amount. If we increased it to say 10,000 and ran that for a little bit, we're gonna see a higher drop ratio. Break out of that, and you can see 48%, 52%. And basically, if we bring it up to about 20,000, that's essentially the same as just running it without the dash R parameter at all. And you'll get lots and lots of drops. So one of the things I do when I'm tuning the server is I'm trying to find the sweet spot, which could be around 3,000. I want to have the drops down near 0%. Let's try that for a minute and let that run and take a look at the percentage here. At 3,000 exchanges per second, it is still pretty high, so that might not be good. Let's take a look. There are some drops, but it's minimal. So that's a that might be a good place to start. Maybe 2,000 would be a good place to start to kind of start fine-tuning the server. 
that's at about 65% of the CPU. And that's kind of what I want to see. I don't want to really see much more than 50, 60% uh, for Kia DHCP4. Break out of that. Okay. And we were able to do 1999.78 four-way exchanges per second. Drops ratio is minimal for discovery offering, and it is completely zero for request acknowledgement. And now that's a short test. I would run this for a lot longer, and I would use a separate parameter to make a timeout for that. Um, but you can see here, I only sent uh, 36,000 packets. That's not enough to get a nice baseline, but just trying to show a basic example of this. So 2000 looks like it's the sweet spot. Okay, so just a little bit of uh, perf DHCP. And uh, so that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave Krause, and I'll see you at the next video.